Pressing the restart button is how San Marcos High School teacher Dawn Hauser feels about her home and garden. She invents new ways to use scrap materials in her miniature food forest that embraces her classic bungalow. This house was built in 1943. It's a World War II bungalow and there was no garden. It was just, there was a fence in the middle of the lot and I moved that up to the edge of the house so I could have more garden space and then I rocked everything that, that first summer when I bought it and kind of put my garden beds in and then just slowly started building my, my garden. To border new beds, Dawn laid 30 yards of river rock over blank soil to fend off rainy day mud pits. I had dogs and cats and I just wanted my house as clean as possible. And I had, I had landscaped it that way at my old house in San Antonio and it worked really well. Uh, kids in and out of the house, kept my house really clean and I did it again here and it was, it's, it's always a great payoff. And I don't have to mow. Luckily, former owners had laid bricks for a backdoor patio and cement pavers alongside the garage. I remember before I started this project thinking, oh, those are, those are carpets. I'm gonna make these the rooms. So I kind of used them to divide my garden into rooms. And I just kind of did my landscaping around them and just filled in all with all the rock. In her layered frame for wildlife habitat, she tucks in fruit bearing plants for the kitchen. Then in the ample side yard, she planted a miniature food forest. It's more of kind of a haphazard kind of gardening area. I'll plant certain things. I'll do my cilantro, my mints, my tomatoes, but it also has my citrus trees, which I want them to get huge. I'm banking on the really huge grapefruit trees that you see and 50 year old homes and figs and apples and peaches. And I've kind of used the fruit trees just around the property. It's more of a natural kind of way of growing them. So it's, it's the fruit trees are in like already established beds. So it looks more of a like lands, more of a landscaped form. Even in January, Dawn harvests Satsuma oranges, Meyer lemons, and kumquats. In her microclimate, she doesn't cover in cold snaps. And I compost everything. And so you're gonna find layers of just meals, you know, avocado pits, which I'll just throw them out there and all of a sudden I'll have a little avocado tree, but I have not mastered keeping those alive over the winter. To provide essential nitrogen, she feeds with inexpensive alfalfa pellets. Alfalfa, and then I, when I do my leaves, I blow the leaves out to the street and then rake them up and then take, haul them back and then plant everything you know, then I'll mulch, mulch with all my leaves so nothing goes in the trash. In this sunny spot, she includes warm weather bloomers like Thryalis, casting a warm leafy glow after frost. Where part shade rules along the fence, she planted ornamental fragrant olives, also called tea olives. Cool weather prompts clouds of fragrant flowers. So my neighbor's house shades it in the afternoon and then I planted them along this side of the house and they're getting big and they don't freeze. Part shade shrimp plant entices hummingbirds, even in her January garden. To assist watering, Dawn stows five gallon buckets behind the greenhouse. And if it's gonna be a dry spell, I just pick them up so I don't have to look at them, because that drives me nuts. <laughs> Dawn stages her containers at its door, where less cold hardy plants can be quickly hauled into warmth. Inside, she starts new plants. Every bit of it was recycled material. I had old polygal, which is in my garage, I did the back end of the garage with polygal. When I re-roofed my garage, I kept all the metal, I kept all the wood, and so I had a guy frame that, and I said, just frame it, clad it with all my metal, and I'll go in and do the rest. And so I it, uh, insulated it, and I didn't buy anything except screws. It has that real hodgepodge feel. Uh, even that big, that big uh, potting table in the back was, um, I found it outside of a restaurant, they were getting rid of it, and so I took it apart and then built that tabletop out of plywood. Especially fun is recycling pieces of the past that Dawn unearths around the old home. Where I grew up on San Antonio Street, it had the same like little brick barbecue pit some houses have, you know, they kind of build it. And when I was digging out, it, d digging it out to put the fig tree in, um, I found marbles and spoons, and when I had the chicken coop, you know, little pieces of, I mean, pottery, really cool stuff. She has her own history with rocks and shells collected from various travels. 
So it's almost like this natural glitter. You think, oh, I'm gonna go put this somewhere else and kind of tell a, kind of layer the story. And so I felt like I was just making a house outside. My kids all think I'm a hippie. You know, I'm OCD, so I'm very tight with deadlines. Oh, this is late, whatever. But I have a more of a kind of a hippie heart. You know, they know I come home and garden. I wake up happy and I, I love coming home and puttering and moving something to better fit. I'll see something, I'm always moving things around. I'm already thinking about where I'm gonna put some, make some more tables outside. I do think it carries over in the classroom. And I think that's a good thing for kids to see people being resourceful. I think we live in a society that kids think, oh, it has to be new for it to be worthy, or I have to have this. And I think it's good for them to see adults going and picking up stuff, stuff out of the trash and making something cool out of it. And it's good for kids to see, hey, I can make something cool. It doesn't have to cost me anything. You know, I can kind of create my own style. Mm -hmm.